today I explained functions. If you're learning to code, you're going to encounter functions. Doesn't matter what language you're using, SQL, Python, R, SAS, whatever other language, you're going to be using lots of functions. What is a function? How do you call a function? What are arguments and parameters? What are default values? How do you pass a nested function? You'll learn all of this and more in this video. Functions do useful things. In data science, some of these things may include computing the average value, sorting a set of numbers, changing the scale of a set of numbers, combining data sets, and so on. For the most common things, somebody else has already written a function for your convenience. We call these built-in functions. Many coding languages have sets of functions that have been written by others for our convenience. We call them packages. In Python, for example, there is a package called statistics that contains a set of functions used for statistical analysis. You can also write your own functions. If you're just learning to code, you are using mostly built-in functions that are written by professional coders. Let's say there's a diving competition with 10 judges submitting scores. To compute the average score, we use a function. In R, this is what you write. In Python, you write the following. Now in Excel, you do this. You may have noticed a pattern here. Each of these functions takes an input object, transforms it, and returns an output object. Usually the code has this general form. Output equals function name, open paren, input, close paren. To compute the average score, we call the, the mean function. S hat equals mean, open paren, S, close paren. So S is the input object that contains the raw scores, and S hat is the output object that contains the average value. The mean function takes S as the input and returns S hat as the output. Functions are picky. For a given function, it only accepts certain types of inputs and it returns one type of output. Think about your car. If it runs on gasoline, you can't feed it diesel. And if the top speed is 200 miles per hour, it won't go any faster. It is really important to know what are the restrictions on the inputs and the outputs when working with functions. For the mean function, R requires a vector of numbers. In Python, you need a list of numbers, and in Excel, a range of cells. In R, if you supplied a vector of characters, it's going to give you an error. The output of the mean function is a single number, which is the average value of the numbers given as input. If you're not sure about the input and output restrictions, you must look up the help. Most functions have parameters or arguments. These arguments modify the behavior of the function. For example, the R function for mean has the following spec. Mean of x, comma, trim equals 0, comma, na dot rm equals false, comma, close paren. Here, trim and na dot rm are arguments. Trim tells R how many observations to drop from the calculation. So in our diving competition, the rule may state to drop the highest and lowest scores before computing the average. This is known as the trimmed mean, with 2 out of 10 or 20% trimming. If there are 10 judges, then 20% trimming means taking the average of the middle 8 scores. Instead of running mean open paren x, 
you would run mean open paren x comma trim equals 0.2 close paren. 0.2 here is to tell R to drop 20% of the data. The value of trim is any number between 0 and 1. Let's see the spec for the mean function again. You see that in the spec, it says trim equals 0. The equals 0 is the default value. If you did not supply a value for trim, R will assume that trimming is zero, meaning that you're not dropping any observations. Sometimes the spec does not contain a default value, which means that the user must supply a value. If you don't supply a value for that parameter, R will return an error. The other argument here is na.rm. RM means remove and NA means missing. So NA.RM controls whether you remove it missing. So by default, NA.RM equals false, which means that if there were to be a missing value in the input, R will not drop it. The default value of false may not be a great thing. That's because R will always return a mean of missing if one or more of the scores are missing. Function definitions can be nested, which means that you can define a new function by using existing functions. For example, the following custom Python function computes the average value of a set of numbers stored in a list called x. Sum and length are both built-in Python functions. Sum adds the numbers in a list, while length counts the number of things in the list. My mean function then returns the value of dividing the sum of x by the length of x. That gives you the average value. The above defines the function. In order to call the function, you write my underscore mean open paren s close paren which gives you the output value which is the single number the average value of the scores stored in the object x now if you want to store the average value you write s hat equals my underscore mean open paren s close paren which creates a new output object called s hat you can also nest functions when using them. Here is an example from R. Round open paren, mean open paren, x comma trim equals dot two, close paren, comma, two close paren. To understand or parse this, you need to take this apart into the following steps. We start with an input object called x. We feed this x into the function mean with the parameter trim equals dot two, the mean function creates an output object called y. This output object y is then fed into the function called round with the parameter two. This function creates another output object called z, and z is the final output from this nested function. The round function is used to round decimal numbers. When given the argument of two, it rounds to two decimal places. In this way, you can chain up a whole series of functions by feeding the output of one function as the input to the next function. This is very powerful, but it can also become very messy when you have a lot of functions and you have a lot of parentheses to take care of. Some functions are so commonly used that we have shorthands to re help reduce clutter and the number of keystrokes. For example, you could write the following function to get the power of a number. Power open paren x comma 2 close paren 
should give you the square of x. Power open bracket x comma 3 should give you the cube of x. However, there's a shorthand for this. We typically write x caret 2 and x caret 3. The caret character is a shorthand for the function power. At the start of the video, before I called the mean function in Python, I ran the following line from statistics, import mean. Let me explain this line now. Someone else has already written a function for computing the mean, which I would like to use. This mean function exists in a set of functions that have been written to perform statistical analysis. Such a set of functions in Python is known as a package. The particular package I need is called statistics. So the line above basically um, asked Python to import the mean function that is found in that package called statistics. Every programming language has a base set of functions that is preloaded every time you run it. In R, the mean function is part of the base set of functions, so I did not have to import a package. Um, however, in Python, the mean function is not part of the base set of functions, which is why we need to run that line. Now, in R, if you have to import functions from a package, you use the library function. For example, library, open paren, mass, close paren. This would load a set of functions um, to do all kinds of statistical analysis that were written by the authors of a book called Modern Applied Statistics Using S, or MAS for short. These functions extend the base functionality of the R programming language. There's a lot to learn about functions. I hope this video helps build your confidence while working with functions. If you like the video, please share with your friends and subscribe to our channel. Comment below to suggest future topics. Principal Analytics Prep. Prepping you for the data revolution. Mm -hmm.